Tennis fans know that when two brilliant players get on the court, it's going to be a special kind of magic. And through the years, there have been some awesome rivalries that have faced each other time after time and where you never know who will come out on top. Let's check out some of the biggest tennis rivalries ever. First, we have John McEnroe versus Bjorn Borg. This was the tennis rivalry that many people called a rivalry of fire and ice. Their personalities were complete opposites, and that made watching the tennis games between these two really entertaining. Bjorn Borg was right-handed, and he was cool as a cue comer. He never lost it and remained seemingly almost unshakable right through his career. Then there was the fire of McEnroe that was the complete opposite of Borg. He was opposite even in his dominant hand being the left. But more noticeable was his demeanor. It was anything but cool. John McEnroe was all fire even on the tennis court. If he felt a certain way, he wasn't shy in sharing his feelings and everyone knew when he was angry. He was even called aggressive multiple times in his career and he got really heated. One thing was for sure, you always knew what he was thinking. These two opposites met each other a total of 14 times, and four of those times were during Grand Slam finals. Three of those Grand Slams saw McEnroe take the win, and one for Borg. The rivalry lasted for a few years, and they gave many memorable performances during that time. Next up, Pete Sampras versus Andre Agassi. Another great pairing that started in the 90s, they played each other 34 times, and it was clear that Sampras was the stronger player between them, since he won a big share of those bouts. Pete Sampras won 20 of the games against the 14 for Agassi. Sampras also took a bunch more Grand Slams than Agassi, and many of those games were actually against each other. And since they were both from the USA, it was fitting that one of the first and biggest games against each other was in 1990 at the US Open Final, and Sampras took that game. And then in a full circle moment, the pair also had their last game against each other in the title match of the US Open in 2002. And again, it was Sampras that took the game, and then he retired from tennis. Agassi has spoken about how the loss of the US Open in 1995 had a massive impact on him, and dented his confidence enough that he really dropped off in the world rankings. That's pretty surprising, because between the two, it was really Agassi that seemed to be the more outgoing and confident of the two. He had some fun and funky style for his hair and outfits, and he was a bit of a media darling and a showman on court. But Sampras was very stoic, and he was very private off the court. Now we have Novak Djokovic versus Roger Federer. Both of these players are incredible, and they have some similarities in their strong points with their game. Both have their strongest game on hard courts, meaning that it doesn't really matter on which surface they face each other, neither gains much of an advantage. And that might be the reason that they have been trading spots on top of the rivalry. Each of them has beaten the other one in each of the four majors, and they are the only two people who have been able to do so against their rival. For a long time, Federer had been the strongest player between the two, but recently it was Jokovic that has taken the lead. Some fans do argue that the age gap is starting to become a factor between them, but they still give us some really great battles when the two of them set foot on court together. Next, Novak Jokovic versus Rafael Nadal. Another great rivalry that Jokovic is tangled up in is his rivalry against Rafael Nadal. They are both incredibly strong and fast players, and their games have had a massive impact on tennis. Again, they're pretty evenly matched. They even only have one year between their ages, and that also means that they have a lot of years in front of them where they can compete against each other, and maybe we can eventually settle the questions about who between them is the better player. Right now, they are regularly counted as the world's number one and world's number two, but both players keep trading off for who takes the number one spot. Many believe that that they are the two greatest players in history, and that makes their rivalry even more legendary. Now we have Rafael Nadal versus Roger Federer. Are you starting to see a pattern here? The three players are so tangled in a fierce rivalry between all three of them. So Nadal and Federer are also rivals against each other. Nadal has had the upper hand when they faced each other on the court, but they are both really strong when it comes to the amount of grand slams they have won. Their games against each other are always spectacular and super entertaining. Federer is a really calm player, and he has a massive variety of strokes that he can rely on. Nadal, on the other hand, depends on his power and the speed that he can play at. Again, Federer starting to age when it comes to competitive tennis, and they might not have a long time left to really figure out who the better player is between all three of the rivals. Next up, we'll check out two of the best female tennis players of all time, one rivalry that ended in an attack, and so much more. Can you guess the rivalries we are talking about? Let us know. Now we have Venus and Serena Williams. There's no better rivalry than that of a sibling rivalry. These two women have had to overcome some massive odds to become some of the best tennis players not only in the world but also in the history of tennis. They are amazing players and have really impacted the way that tennis is played but on a number of occasions they've had to face their biggest obstacle, each other. They have faced each other in a bunch of different Grand Slams through the years and while it's normally Serena that comes out on top when they face off they are both incredibly strong tennis players. Watching them go head to head is a thing of beauty. They don't hold back just because they're sisters. In fact, I think they might be even harder on each other than they would play against 
against anyone else. Bragging rights might be more important than any title win. Their rivalry is awesome, but when they team up, they are almost unstoppable. They have won many doubles titles together. The Williams sisters' fierce competitive nature, combined with their strong bond and sisterly love, is a really great rivalry to watch. Next up, Steffi Graf and Monica Seles. This was one rivalry that really took a really terrible turn and left one of the best players ever with a serious injury that completely changed her career. Steffi Graf was the best female tennis player for a very long time, but then Monica Seles, who was just a teenager at the time, came onto the scene in a big way. The rivals faced each other in a bunch of different games for a few years, and most of the time it was Seles that came out victorious. One obsessed fan did not like that Seles was giving Graf a run for her money. Seles was only 19 at the time, and she had already won a whole lot of titles. But then one day, at a match against a completely different player, a man who was obsessed with Steffi Graf decided that he would make her the world number one once again. Monica Seles was bending over to get a drink when the man literally stabbed her in the back. The fact that she was bending over was the one thing that saved her. She was protecting her vital organs and her spine and could have gotten hurt much worse if she was standing upright. He charged her again, but her bodyguard stepped in and saved her. It wasn't Graf's fault at all, but it did impact Seles' career massively, taking her years to get back on court, and she never got back to full power. Lastly, Yvonne Lindell versus Boris Becker. This was a bit of an old school rivalry, but one that gave fans of the late 80s and early 90s hours of entertainment and quality tennis to watch. Overall, it was Yvonne Lindell who came out ahead in the number of wins when they came against each other. But Becker was the one who had the advantage when it came to Grand Slam titles. And even if Lindell did take more games head to head, Becker had his revenge by denying Lindell one of his biggest dreams, the Wimbledon title. They had many different games packed with action, but the most memorable had to have been the 1988 ATP Tour Final, where they played for more than five hours, and Becker finally came out on top by winning the tiebreaker. It doesn't get more exciting than that. Did we miss any massive rivalries? Let us know in the comments, and thanks for watching!